So AI art is here, like it or not. And since I'm a professional artist, people often ask me like, oh, do you feel threatened by it? And to be honest, no, I th think it's kind of fun. I mean, like anything, it's a tool. And I know in my own practice, my abilities really jumped up when I got a hold of Clip Studio Paint. Uh, I'd been drawing things on paper and scanning them in and, <clears throat> excuse me, trying to manipulate them on screen. And there was a limit to what I could do with that. And suddenly when I started uh, bringing my things in, scanning them, and then working over top of them, working digitally, uh, there was so much more I could do. Plus when somebody came to me and said, oh, could we move this here or edit that or make this bigger? Oh, you know that thing that you did that was the size of a stamp? We'd like to make, put it on a blimp now. So this is possible when you're working digitally. So I just see this as another tool. And as somebody who's taught people from time to time and really enjoyed it, uh, teaching bookbinding or uh, the odd class about zines or such, I love the idea of people having tools in their hands to be more creative. So I'm not threatened if somebody's more creative. It doesn't change my practice at all. And I want that for them. I also appreciate that there's a nerdy quality to this and we want to do it in that, you know, Jurassic Park, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Um, but I think the cat's out of the bag. I can't help playing with these things. And it's, it's been, it's been fun. Uh, I find the result, it's kind of like a slot machine. You put in your prompt and even if you've been given a great prompt that's generated a beautiful looking image somewhere else, I put it into the tools that I have and mm, hit or miss. Uh, so sometimes you get something horrific from the uncanny valley, but other times you get a kind of pretty piece of artwork. It's not necessarily my style. A lot of it is very concept art video gamey looking, you can kind of tell the from the output what the people who create these tools are into. <clears throat> and the cartoon art that I like is still largely missing from this stuff. Um, now there's a whole new category of, of outlets for AI art uh, with Etsy shops and print on demand products like t-shirts and mugs and such. And I've discovered this whole vein of YouTube channels that are promising vast riches for promoting this stuff online. So because I'm a nerd and there's a website called appsumo.com, A-P-P-S-U-M-O, I'm kind of addicted to it because they have all these software as a service tools that you can get lifetime deals on for a fraction of what they'd normally cost. You know, a lot of AI tools are coming out now and they all want $24 a month or, you know, $15 a month, but I'm not going to pay for each of these things separately. So the creative of these things will put them on AppSumo when they're launching and trying to get attention and you can buy them as a one-off for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 dollars US, which, you know, then becomes a bit more expensive when you translate it into Canadian. But um, yeah, I've, I've kind of become addicted to this thing because you get a 60 day return window. So you can test these things out, see if they're for you and just send them back for, well, not send them back, just get a refund for what you paid and get cut off from that account. But um, I've collected a lot of tools with a lot of promise for all these things that one day I intend to do. So since I've been seeing so much of this YouTube stuff around A2, A, uh, AI art, I, th I thought, okay, uh, I've already bought an AI generation tool called uh, Super Machine. Uh, and since you get a zillion credits every month to use, so you don't have to be so careful about uh, which each time I'm going to use it, you can just keep pulling that slot machine handle and see what you get again and again. Um, I thought, well, let's, let's try this. Let's post some stuff. I have an old Etsy shop that I haven't used in 11 years since I was selling bookbinding stuff and, and some zines there. So I dusted that off. Uh, revamped everything, made a little logo for it. And, um, you know, my parents used to always say, never do anything just for the money, which, you know, there's, there's a lot of family money conversation in that. And I've wrestled with, like, is it okay to make money? Uh, you know, how much should you pursue that? And at this point in my life, the idea of passive income is pretty appealing because I've realized that in doing 
like personally created artwork, there's there's definitely a ceiling to how much you can produce. I mean, you look around online and it's always kind of staggering to see just how much some cartoonists are able to to crank out. But I want to live a life too, so there's only so much I can do. And I can spend a year creating a comic book like I did with my, my last series, Life on Vega, um, over three years, I produced three comics, which I can sell for like five bucks each. And I also decided that I would donate the money to an Animal Justice, which is a, an animal rights charity here in Canada. So I'm not making anything. Um, so if I could produce something once and post it online and it could generate money for people who found that useful, hey, that that's great. I mean, personally, I don't know what people use digital clip art for, um, because I'm a cartoonist, I just, if I can think of something that I want, I'll just draw that and have it, but it's, it's work. So, and not everybody necessarily has those skills or access to the tools. So I figured, okay, let's crank out a bunch of stuff. Uh, so I took my Victoria day, uh, holiday cause my, my husband had a cold. So I kind of had a free pass to just kind of do whatever I wanted for the day while he recuperated. So I took from morning to night, just cranked out uh, 120 or so images in different sets, which was a lot of work because you're trying to come up with a good prompt and then see, well, what kind of outcome am I going to get? I'd say like, I don't know, anywhere from one in five to one out of 10 images was perhaps useful. I mean, you some sometimes... The, the faces would be lovely, but then you take a look closer and they've got like seven fingers intertwined and it's, it's horrific. So I'm thinking Super Machine is not using like the latest version of Mid Journey or whatnot, but that's kind of the trade-off for having a lot of access. So I generated all these images and then, you know, I had to, like I said, do the, the, the shop design and the logo and stuff. And then I had to do kind of collages of all the different images together and then a sample image and then write descriptions, which again, I used an AI tool called write seed for, which I got off AppSumo. And <clears throat> I posted all this stuff and I figure, what is it today? It's the 24th of May. So I'm going to give it until June 24th and see, does this do anything? Does anybody take any interest in it? One product that, was highly recommended as, oh, everyone wants this, was to create an image of a room with a picture frame in it so that artists or whomever could, could put their own picture in there as a sort of a, a mock-up sample of here's what this looks like in situ in an, in an apartment or whatever. So those were a bit more work. I, I went into Clip Studio, my trusty tool, and created a layered uh, drawing where, or image where there was a scene and then a frame with some shadows and whatnot and people could slide their picture in there uh charge slightly more for that because it was a, a bit of work i mean the price of these things i'm charging like 250 canadian for that um and as advised i you know doubled the price and then put on a sale where it's halved just because i guess that looks more enticing or whatever but for the rest of the stuff they're a dollar to a dollar fifty. So I've, I figure I've put a really low bar to entry so that people just will hopefully just buy this stuff without really caring much or thinking about it much. So we'll see. Um, this is, so this is my experiment and I'll report back and let you know how it goes if this is really a thing. And, you know, there's always the the factor of like, maybe I'm not doing it right. Uh, maybe what I've produced, you know, is interesting to me, but not to the audience that they want more feminine stuff or birds and trees and flowers and bees and stuff. And I'm just not going to do that because I don't, I don't, it's not my aesthetic, so I'm not going to do it right. And I don't want to do something just for the money that I don't feel I have anything to contribute to. So I'll check back in a month and uh, let you know how this Etsy experiment goes. I'll put my link to the shop in the description so you can see what I generated and uh, see if it gives you any ideas. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.